I'm a managing director of GOMO Learning. GOMO Learning is uh, part of the Learning Technologies Group along with Epic, um, came out of Epic, and uh, GOMO is a multi-device e-learning authoring tool. So I'm here in the next 20 minutes or so uh, to show you some examples of the sorts of content that can be produced with GOMO, and then also to give you a bit of background uh, around the tool, give you a quick demo, hopefully give you an idea of how easy it is to create multi-device content using GOMO. So we'll start first a um, little bit about GOMO. It's a multi-device e-learning authoring tool. It's built on four platforms. Content creation, so ease of content creation. Customization, the ability to make your content look exactly how you want it. Collaboration, this is a team-based, cloud-based software as a service application, so you can access it from the internet. No software to download, just log in and create content. And then distribution. The beauty of GOMO is it's multi-device, and the content it creates is responsive and adaptive. So it understands the target device, and it shapes itself automatically. You don't have to create three versions of the same course for the desktop, iPad, and mobile phone. You create one version, and GOMO takes care of the rest. Just some of the uh, people that are benef benefiting from GOMO at the moment. Um, Epic are probably the biggest users of GOMO, and that's it. GOMO is their default tool when Epic are creating multi-device content for, for their customers. So what do we mean by responsive content? I'm sure you've seen lots of, of examples of this um, at the show. It's a pretty hot topic. Well, responsive content and adaptive content is content that reacts to the device that you're going to display your content on. So if I just come out of full screen mode in here, minimize that one a bit, stretch it out. So there's my content in a full width um, desktop application, as you'd expect. But if I start to break that content down a little bit, you can see I've now got some scrolling coming in. So the two images were too big to go together. So it's put them one on top of the other. And as I take the content down further, it's automatically scaling the images to the target device. So unlike a lot of old e-learning tools where the image would just disappear off the side of the device, GOMO is intelligently placing the content for a mobile phone, for example. If you look at the bottom of the screen as well, the menu, as I slide the player open again, the menu changes. Again, when it gets down to mobile phone size, it realizes there isn't enough room for all of the text, and it automatically sets the menu um, to play back nicely on a mobile device. OK, let's go back to full screen. As I mentioned at the beginning, GOMO, GOMO is available as software as a service. So it's a cloud-based solution. And it's designed for team-based content development. It's delivered through the cloud. You just log in through a browser. No software to download, no software to install. Log in and start creating content. And I'll give you an example of that, show you how that works in a moment. And there's a full range of collaboration capabilities in there so that two people can't update the same content at the same time. Um, we've got review capabilities, so you can let your subject matter experts in, and they can have a look at the content and review it. Before I go on to the, uh, the four pillars of, of GOMO, let's show you GOMO content running on a slightly different device. So um, I'm running Reflector here. Here's my uh, course running on an iPad. So all of the interactions optimized for the iPad. If I tilt my iPad this way, my content responds appropriately. So again, if you're on a mobile phone and you think, well, this is a bit narrow, I'll turn it portrait rather than landscape, GOMO is going to sort it out for you. It's responsive and adaptive. The interactions are the same. So the question banks, the images, the text, the graphics, the video players, they all adopt, uh, sorry, adapt to the target device. You've no worries that people will not be able to consume your content. You create it once and publish it to any device. Just show you a couple of other examples of content, and then I'll go into the basics of GOMO and how we can create it. Here's an um, information security course created in GOMO. Uh, this one's for QVC, shopping channel. You probably can't hear the uh, audio on there. 
We can show the transcript. And again, it's all swipe enabled. So when you're on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, you can swipe uh, rather than using the, uh, the mouse for this. Video, text, animation, all the elements you'd expect to find in an e-learning tool. Oops, drag and drop. So everything you'd expect in a standard piece of e-learning, but completely and automatically optimized for multi-device delivery. Got lots of other examples of content we've created with GOMO that I can show you on the stand. We're just over there, by the way. So looking at GOMO in detail, what can you do with it? Content creation is all done through a web browser. You log in, and you start creating content. Five or six years ago, when um, I was involved with a different e-learning company, we couldn't do this sort of stuff through a web browser. We had to do it through software. We can now do it all through a web browser. So we can author on the internet. GOMO has customization, full customization. It comes with a whole raft of themes to get you started, and then you can customize them to your heart's content to make the content exactly how you want it to look. Collaboration. This is a cloud-based, server-based collaborative tool. So if you want to save time and money on your e-learning development, and you need to put three people on to a development project, you haven't got three people working on three disconnected laptops on three different products and then trying to assemble that content somehow into one cohesive course. You build your content live on the internet, and you can all work on the same course at the same time. And finally, distribution. Two clicks to publish the content, and it's going to automatically adapt itself to your target device. So hassle-free multi-device publishing. You don't set screen sizes. You don't worry about the target device. You just hit the Publish button. OK, so let's have a look at how you would go about doing that. I'll just go back to the projects page. So I'm logged in to the GOMO portal. Uh, this is the view I get when I first log in. And there's the content that's currently available in my portal for me to start working on. So I can either open an existing course and start making edits and changes and so forth. Or if I prefer, I can create a brand new project. So let's create a brand project. We've got a quick start wizard. So the first thing you can do is run a wizard, and it just helps you get going straight away. I'm going to create a brand new blank project. We'll give it a name. It's 1237. And Mike's big demo. The next stage of the wizard is to pick the theme. GOMO comes populated with a number of themes that you can choose, and you can then customize them. So if the theme that you see on the screen doesn't match what you're trying to achieve, you can vandalize it to your heart's content, give it your brand, your look and feel. You can then save that theme uh, so that other people in your organization can use it. So I'm going to pick the uh, Turing theme at the top there. And we'll click the Next button. Now, what are we going to do? Excuse the lipsum orum at the top there. We're still developing GOMO. It's just about ready. Uh, maybe I want a menu in this course. Maybe I want the help system to be on. And I'm going to say we'll have three topics in this particular course. Then the final step of content creation is who's going to work on this course with me? I've only got three users in this particular day database. But if you're a big organization, you might have 20 people who create content. You can choose the four or five people that will see this course, can access it, and can start creating content. Let's save that, and GOMO will now build that course for me. And there it is. There's my new course. So we automatically get the course structure. This is all drag and drop. We can move it around the page. If I want to make some changes, even though I'm in a web browser, I can right click, go to my topic settings. So topic one, perhaps we'll call that introduction. If I could spell. Yeah, there we go. And I've also got a production status button here. So I can say that this particular course is in development and apply those changes. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the big screen, but the little circle in the top right is now sort of half full. 
that shows my colleagues that this particular course is in development. It's not ready for review yet. So we've got production statuses in there so we can keep our eye on how our product development is going. When we go for review, we have online review as well. And you can open that up to your subject matter experts so they can have a look at the course and make comments directly into the course. Now, I could just build a few screens for you, but it just means a lot of typing and dragging in pictures. So I'll go back and edit some existing content just to give you an idea of the authoring capability. So if we go and pick one of the existing courses, the GOMO Asset Demo, click into the overview topic that I want to start making some changes to. And this is the GOMO authoring environment. So here's my screen in the middle. Um, and with multi-device e-learning, you've got to think a bit differently from how you might develop e-learning in traditional e-learning tools, because we're not designing for 1024 by 768, where we put a picture 10 pixels in, and then we put some text 10 pixels to the right of it, and we have a button somewhere else. We've got to think very differently, because we're designing for multi-device. The way we do it in GOMO is through the use of columns. And you can see here, we've got up to four column layouts within a single screen. And by grouping our content into columns, we then guarantee that it works across multiple devices. So I can set my content up with columns. If I need a little bit more space to work, I can minimize and expand the uh, properties bars at the side. On the left-hand side here, I've got my navigator. Oops. Oh, dear. Shows you a list of um, all of the slides in this particular course. And then I've also got the assets where I can choose what do I want on this particular screen, video, questions, multiple choice quiz, text, images, and so forth. So let's go and edit an existing slide. We've got a slide for our offices. And this one's using a three-column design. So we've got some text, some more text, and some hot text. Hot text is text where we can click on, make it do something. So. Um, I won't bother editing the hot text, but let's go and look at the subscreen. So when I click on those bits of text in the course, it's going to reveal the three screens that we've got here. We've got Rio de Janeiro for the Epic Office, must get out there one of these days, and Brighton. Um, we can see here that that's probably not Brighton. So let's go and edit that particular image. Click on here, and here's the list of all the image assets that are stored on my GOMO server. I've got a list view, and I can search for the uh, course by its name, for example. Or if I use the thumbnail view, I can just have a quick visual look at all of the contents I've got on this particular e-learning server. And if I scroll down to the bottom, well, there's Brighton Pier. Let's apply that and save that change. That topic will now be saved on the server, and we can then go and preview the course and have a look at how that's running in real life. So we've saved that topic, close the authoring panel down, and in our Actions button, I'll now preview the project. Within GOMO, you get a multi-view previewer. What this means is you don't have to publish the course, deploy it to an LMS or a web server or whatever it might be, and then test it on a mobile and on a desktop and on a tablet. We do all that within the GOMO portal. So here's my GOMO asset demo. It's the one I've just modified. And if I go into the uh, overview section, for example, testing, testing, testing. There's the uh, offices. And when I click on Brighton, I've now got the picture of Brighton Pier rather than the picture of uh, Rio de Janeiro, which obviously should have gone on that particular page. I'm running this particular course in desktop preview mode. We might want to say, well, what does it look like on a tablet? So a typical tablet screen size. So I don't have to mess around with my devices. I can preview my content inside GOMO. Got that question incorrect as usual. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. We've got all sorts of scrolling within here. And this is all HTML5 content. It can also be packaged up as native apps for Android and iOS. Final bit of previewing then. Let's preview this on a smartphone. Again, 
the previewer drops down to smartphone, screen aspect ratio, and all of my content adapts itself automatically to be smartphone ready. So when I go into the interactions, they're all optimized for my smartphone. And that's it. I built that course once, and I don't have to worry about my devices. I know if I stick this in my LMS, as long as you've got a multi-device LMS, of course, and you can access it, I can see that content live uh, on any of my devices. So true multi-device authoring from a single code base. Just make a couple more changes just to finish off. Not really looked at the themes in here, but if I look at the theme for that particular um, course, we're using the uh, Turing Blue theme. I can choose to replace the theme, and it will just rebrand that course in its entirety. Or I might just choose to play with some of the theme settings. So if we look at some of the content layouts, I can choose how much of the desktop it scales to. If I want my columns in a different color, then I've got color pickers throughout. So I can make graphical changes like so. I can choose the font for this course. Again, the font's a global setting. Change the font here. The course will be completely updated with a new font. Won't bother doing that one. Uh, but let's go and change something else a little bit more interesting. Maybe if I go to the topics, um, we might want to use a horizontal slider now rather than a vertical slider. So if you remember the last time I was running that course, I was running it with vertical slides on the page. Let's go back and find it again. I'll just I'll republish it. So if I go back to that course now, just wait for it to finish, and we'll preview this particular project. Uh, It's still doing something, sorry. There we go. So let's preview that project now. I'll also have a go at previewing it on the iPad. So here we have the preview of that course. I just made the changes. And if we go in now, we can see we've got a horizontal scroll rather than the vertical scroll through the content. Clearly, the vertical scroll still applies parts of it, because when you get into the smartphone mode, then we can utilize the vertical scroll on the smartphone screen. But it was that easy to reconfigure that content and have it playing back perfectly on all of my devices. And if we just go back into the Overview, got the horizontal scroll, but we still get all of the changes I've just made. Nice thing about the scrolling in GOMO is it's sensible scrolling. You could potentially just scroll infinitely like you might do on a very long Amazon page, but we can set the default so that it scrolls nicely when you swipe to the next sensible block of content. So rather than hitting scroll and then scrolling back all of a sudden, we can force it just to stop at the next block of content. So that's really everything I plan to show you in terms of the demo. Just one other thing to say. Um, if you want to see any more, if you want to find out any more, talk to me or any of the GOMO team. We're just here behind the Epic stand. We're part of the Epic group at Learning Technologies. If you go to the um, GOMO Learning website, which is gomolearning.com, and click on that big circular button there, uh, you'll be entered into the prize draw. And you can win a free year's free subscription to GOMO for the small team edition. And that's for four developers, 100 projects, four gig of storage. So if you like what you've seen and you fancy having a play, there's 30 day trials on there. But if you fancy having a go at winning the product, uh, then you can do that by clicking on the GOMA website. Thank you for your time, and uh, thanks very much.